All right, welcome back, everybody, to Tuned In with Jim Cummings. Today we have E.G. Daly on the podcast. You know her from the Powerpuff Girls. You know her from Pee Wee Herman and much, much more, the Rugrats. Thank oh, you so much for joining on us. And on. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. I'm so happy you are here. I love you this so much. This is so too. dang cool. Thank you. E.G., I, I, we, I've known you. We have known us for as long as just about anybody that I know in this yeah, business. Yeah, decades. And I remember... And I can't even think of what it was, but it was at the old B and B Sound. Yeah. And we were doing a press kit. Yeah. And I didn't even know what it was. I think it might have been, might have been for Darkwing. Might have been for Darkwing Duck. Yeah. Could Do you have think been. it was? Or it was probably Dark... something for Disney. I, I would imagine. Jungle Cubs. Yeah, maybe. Whatever. Yeah. But it was a long time. And and anyway, they uh, Entertainment Tonight. Uh, came okay. there. They decided, you know, okay, we're going to do something. And I'm standing there like a doofus. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, I do the funny voices. Yeah, man. And then, and they go, and this is E.G. Daly. And she stands up and you went through this like modeling routine. You were like slow motion dancing. And I'm going, wow, this chick is on fire. <laughs> That's she's, me, all righty. Yeah, she's <laughs> never done this before. <laughs> and I'm sitting there and I'm, I'm doing arm farts trying to be cool. And, and you're just like this, you know, vixen pizza. That's uh, my need to be heaven. seen all the time. I'm learning about that. Yeah, oh man. I'm learning the deep, deep dark behind it. Yeah, yeah. well, we have to bring you out of your show yeah, eventually. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's just too shy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but uh, we have been working on... Uh, on any number of shows over the years. Yeah, a lot together. of shows. And, you know, we do the cons together, which is sweet. And yeah, it's yeah, good. Yeah. So come and see us, by the We're way. We're a very specific tribe. You know, it's yeah. a very special oh, little tribe sure. we have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. of, uh, and we're all m making these great livings at things that used to get us kicked out of class. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, and you get to be a goofball. Well, I've always looked at it. Yeah. yeah. Jokes yeah. on Sister Mary Agnes now, right? <laughs> <laughs> or whoever. Yeah. Yeah. It's good stuff. So what is happening right now? Um, are you, let's are see. you off to uh, somewhere or back um, from somewhere? You mean, no, I'm actually, um, what have I been doing? It's actually been a little bit slower, mm -hmm. which has been really kind of interesting. Yeah. yeah, it's slower, but not really so much for us because we're still, I'm still working. Mm -hmm. I do a show called Grimsburg with mm -hmm. John Hamm, which is really kind of funny. Oh, that's so I cool. do a bunch of different characters on that, which is always like fun to me when they, mm -hmm. they're like, we want you to do her and him and her and that kid and... To me, that's like the best of the, to me, that's the most fun. Like if you oh, have like one role, that's cool. But to me, when they give you like a bunch of things, that's just like my favorite thing. So I'm doing that. Mm -hmm. And then Rugrats is still going. We're on like s another season. Is and so? Yeah, they picked wow. it up and they rebooted Rugrats, which is really great. So I've been doing like season, we're done with season two is now aired on, on Paramount Plus and Nickelodeon. Wow. So um, I feel super lucky because after like 14 years, that show came back. And wow. yes, we had to audition for our roles again. No way. Was, yeah. Which people oh, would never, people boy. were like, what? You had to because yeah. they were like, we want to make sure you're not like, hello, everyone. We're going oh. to do a new show, episode 249. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, yeah. so it was like, we were, we were like, really? And it was nerve wracking because they were like, um, he doesn't sound, Tommy doesn't sound like, and I was like, what are you talking about? He's not bald I enough. I made this voice. Yeah, I don't right. know what it was. It was like, yeah. and, but then of course, you know, it all worked out, but there was like, it was weird. Yeah. It's like, gee, you don't sound like you. Yeah. What? Wait, who does? <laughs> That's <laughs> enough to make you crazy. But yeah. it was fine, but they want to make sure like, you know, sometimes people stop doing working or don't want to, or, mm -hmm. or, or they, you know, yeah. they're, they've transitioned into something else or, you know, mm -hmm. they want to make sure your voice is still but the beautiful thing about our job, Jim, mm -hmm. is that our voice is our voice. Like, we could oh, yeah. age, but we could still do the kid voice or the, yeah, you know, yeah. it's cool. I, I couldn't do kid voices when I was a kid. You couldn't? But, but, I, but just, you do a dang good it. Winnie the Pooh, I, I do a good ya. Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for noticing. <laughs> but uh, It really is like the gift that keeps on giving when you get those yeah. shows that just mm -hmm. come back around and you're like, Oh my God, it's already established and everybody loves it and we're just going to go right yeah. back. It's so good. Well, you know, when I do conventions, um, you know, uh, and it, this has been going on for years. I was, I was telling Chris earlier, you know, a seven-year-old will come up dressed as Darkwing Duck and I go, okay, well, that show was off the air 20 years before you were born. They don't care. Yeah, they don't care. Well, it's on Disney Plus now. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's and, like we uh, don't go away. I mean, we yeah. will take a little break, but the shows don't go away. So yeah. then we are right back and it's like nobody missed anything. So yeah, great. it's very current. Yeah. 
like the Devil's Rejects. Yeah. It's very current. I love it. <laughs> I love the fact, everybody, that <laughs> E.G. Daly was the sweetest little character in the world. Babe. The, the little piggy. Babe, the little piggy. And then she was in Devil's Rejects with Rob Zombie. Yeah. Very natural progression <laughs> there. That's what I love, you know? I love it. And we're yeah. limitless, you know? I yeah. love to do a kid. And that's funny because I get the cons. I'll have my whole table of pictures. So mm. I have one side of my table is like, oh, we have like, you know, yeah, Tommy Pee-wee's. Pickles yeah. and we have Buttercup and then we have like all the cartoons, the sweet characters, yeah, Babe yeah. and Happy Feet. And then it moves yeah. into the middle, like the <laughs> pop culture of like, oh, we have Pee-wee's Big Adventure, yeah. Do- Do- Dottie and Pee-wee, and we have Valley Girl, and we have all those yes. pop culture films. And then it slides over to the dark set. Yeah. <laughs> and then we have like, uh, and then we have like, you know, Devil's Rejects and 31 yes. and all the horror movies that I've, that's, that are my favorite thing to do too. Yeah, it's gotta be. Yeah. Well, it's just like a license to overact yes. and steal. And also change your look. And like every time I do a Rob Zombie, I've done a couple He's like really into, tra- I love to transform. Like I like to be a cartoon in real life. Like the more I can transform my face or my body, mm-hmm. the more I like it. And with Rob Zombie, he's like very particular about the look of the character. And mm-hmm. and like he actually, when he called me for the second movie, 31, he actually said, I, I have a role for you. And I was like, mm-hmm. amazing. And then he sent me pictures. So he had actually already rendered pictures of the character in a cartoon mm-hmm. that were that was me. And the lead oh, actor wow. uh, that he hired that played my leading man. And it was really cool to see somebody had drawn me in a cartoon for this live action feature. Wow. Yeah, it was really. That is. Yeah. That's pretty cool. It was so cool. And I'd like tape on my yeah. boobs. I said boobs. You, you, you <laughs> he, that was my wardrobe. Them? It was just X black masking tape on each boob. Oh, so I see. When they brought my wardrobe in, it was like a hanger with two clips and a little snack size bag, plastic baggie. <laughs> And they clipped it to the hanger. And then I was like, "That's that was my top part. And then this okay. little tiny sheer looked like a pantyhose for your head that would, went over it. And then some little bloomers. And that was my wardrobe. I was like, okay. Hey, I love it. <laughs> you had your wardrobe in your uh, in a watch baggie. pocket. Yeah, in a baggie. Oh, wow. Wardrobe in a baggie, baby. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. That, that, is that going to be your name of your autobiography? Wardrobe I, in a baggie. Wardrobe in a baggie. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, I remember seeing your one woman show and you were astonishing. Thanks. Hey. Yeah. And you could have put that wardrobe in a baggie as well. Yeah, I recall. that one too. I'm into that. That's and funny. I do recall. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that was, that was astonishing. Fun. Thanks, what was that about? Um, that was called Listen Closely. And it was basically my journey of like, you know, starting out in Hollywood. But, you know, it was like, it was kind of all mixed in. It was like, Mm-hmm. My journey of how I started and working and how I just hustled. And mm. of course, it was a lot of Me Too stuff, too, that I thought was normal because mm-hmm. that's what you did. Back when I grew up, you just you had a meeting and then it was like, I guess it's a date. I really just wanted mm. the job, but I guess it's a date. So it was a yeah. lot of that. But then there was also a lot of beautiful work that I started to get. And there was yeah. also the thinking of like, you know, there was just there was also life going on while I was starting to my journey in my career. There was like traumas that I had and so I kind of just mixed it all together beautifully like and it was both like really sad sometimes it was really funny sometimes and also was really profound but it was also like talking about my journey so to me I it wasn't like a I didn't want it to be a self-indulgent documentary mm-hmm. like look at me and watch about me it was more of like how can I share what I learned and how I processed things that were super painful and super amazing and super awesome and help other people to maybe go, wow, that, that's a really beautiful way to look at it. So maybe I can kind of fix mm-hmm. that part of me. So to me, it was called Listen Closely because I played myself as a child. So I was like, it was me, Little Age, like Little Age. And Little Age would say things to like, I would talk to myself and I'd be mm-hmm. like, Little Age would be like, I don't like that guy. And then Big Meege would be like, no, we have to be nice to him. He might give us the job. And the little bee's like, but I didn't like him. You know, like there was like, Contrast. It was beautiful. Yeah. It was contrast between listening to myself, my inner self, and the big part of me that learned to be people pleaser, trying to shush my little voice, but then at the end, learning that I really need to listen mm-hmm. to my inner voice so that I could take care of myself. So it was really yeah. kind of fun. I'm going to blow yeah. your mind now. You ready for okay. this? A little jingle. Prada, Prada, Gucci, Do-do-do-do, Gucci, Dolce, Dolce and Gabbana. Gabbana. How did you remember that? I don't know. You, Get out. Because you sang it. You remember that? I remember that. Jim. Yeah, I remember what? that. 
I got goosebumps just now when you Prada, jumped. Prada, Prada, Gucci, 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 Dolce, Dolce and, Gabbana. and Gabbana. Yeah, that was one of the songs. That's an original. That was, that was no. your, yeah. So, so see, I'm a fan too. Oh my God, I can't believe you. Yeah. It's really cool. And I heard it once in my life. Oh my God, I can't believe you remember that. Yeah. I'm going to give you, I'll give you a link so maybe Peggy might want to watch it. I, uh -huh. I filmed it. Oh yeah. Yeah, we had it filmed on like three cameras and I mm. put it on Amazon and people... People download it, uh, mm. but I'd love to sh give it to you. So maybe Peggy, it's yeah. It's, to Let's me, do. it was. A, but the really cool thing is that I'm actually now working on a documentary mm -hmm. that is taking from a lot of that, but also all the years now since. And ironically, as I filmed everything as I was growing up, like you know, like in the '80s, like when every time I did shows, I always had a camera, a V8 camera. Oh yeah, these, sure, sure. Some yeah. little V8 something. So yeah, I filmed everything. I filmed, yeah. I filmed like going on doing singing dates. I filmed doing whatever it was. I filmed hanging out with my friends. I filmed wow. tranny bars where we all, where I did singing <laughs> dates and like all the fun stuff. I don't remember you. I did filming. everything. I mean, I wasn't there. Yeah, you weren't there. But I, I, did all, I did every kind of beautiful, <laughs> fun thing. There were so many That's weird so things, cool. but I filmed it all. And so wow. now I'm putting You must together. have quite a, a reel. Yeah. So I'm, yeah, I'm making a documentary and I'm yeah. pulling in all that footage from the 80s. That's cool. And, and that talking really about cool. yeah yeah is there a is there like a process to like revamp the the footage or is it well i had to look through it all mm -hmm. so luckily i had it all trans transferred into like a hard drive because it was all in like weird video things yeah mm -hmm. so i had it the guy just dropped off here uh so i had it transferred all so that and then i had my assistant and i would sit through and watch each thing and she, we would take notes about pieces that we think might be pertinent mm -hmm. things I might have said or something that happened and she documented she kept everything really like tight like documented which reel we saw which thing and which num which like part of that like 26.5 to 30.2 is where mm. we're going to use that little clip mm. but we kind of documented I had to do that for a long for a while yeah and that was really imagine, yeah. painful sometimes I was just like it almost made me feel a little like crazy for a little bit. Tedious, right? It was tedious, but it was also like I was having to watch myself, like let's say during my marriage, mm. talking to my my kid's dad. And there was a time period where he was, you know, and it's known, I and mean, I love him dearly. He's my close, he's my family. But during that time period, he was doing a lot of drugs. So, mm. you know, I had videotaped, like I said, everything. And there were times right. where I'd videotape him. And sometimes it was super painful. And I would watch, we would go on family trips and I'd watch myself walking around with the kids and I'd always say, will you film me here? So I'm here too. Cause I felt like nobody realized like, right. I want to be in the footage too. Yeah, so I, I, can... I, I was that too. You were I that? that guy too. Yeah. You were I, that was, guy. I used to have like when my oldest kids were young and, and you know, the others, it was crazy Yeah. because, uh, I was never in the home movies because yeah. I was taking them. Yeah. It's but, right. uh, you know, and, and then crazy occasionally, making. so, you know what I would do is I would, I would stop and I would look in front of a mirror and say, Okay, I'm in this damn thing too, just in case. Yeah, you're, right. You know, just to, just cause. Yeah, because you want to be there, but yeah, there was that wasn't even the most of it. It was just more yeah. like capturing moments that were very fragile. Mm. And when I was watching it, I was seeing some of it, and I was watching the way I started to see myself becoming very subdued. It's mm. almost like I got married and felt like my job was to be the great a great mother, which is my favorite thing in, in the world. Mm. Being a mother was to me like the greatest privilege that you could have. But I also noticed like I sort of let my shine doll out as I was trying to be a good mom and I let go of all of my own needs. And also for my, my kid's dad, I, I'm, he was dealing with some issues. So I was like always trying to just take care of everyone. And I, mm -hmm. I hear my voice because, you know, we're so sensitive to the voice, but I oh, hear yeah. myself being like, hi, hon. Oh. Okay. You know, I just could feel oh, myself yeah, just, just being, fragile. Yeah. Just being very like. Very vulnerable. And I was just like, yeah, just almost just like a little bit shut down, which yeah. is weird. And um, which is so not it's, you. It's not really me because <laughs> no. I'm kind of a loud person sometimes. But that is part of me too. That's part of me where I go when I don't feel safe. You know. Yeah. So I I just no noticed a lot of things and it brought up a lot of feelings and also I it's good because it got gave me a chance to process things and go like, wow, that's where that kind of came from. And oh, so I'm doing this thing. It's pretty oh, cool. Good, yeah. Good, good, good. Yeah, and it'll have a lot of original music in it and. A lot of like live shows from the '80s that are really mm -hmm. fun. You yeah, because so you make music as well, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, she sure does. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen you a couple of times. I can't think of the name of that venue. It was right at uh, Coconut Teaser. 
Is that it? Oh, yeah. The one on the corner yes, sunset. Yeah. Corner. Now it's like something else, but yeah. Yeah, yes. I could not think of the name of yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, it was across from the um the big Virgin Records and uh or sort of kind of slouch wise from there. Anyway, yeah, yeah, that's the one. That's yeah. where I saw you. Well, I think across the street is like I don't know. Yeah, there's stuff going on across yeah, the street. But yeah, you and your, you were smaller than the guitar. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Record a guitar, baby, for me. That's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was fun. It was a good times. Yeah, good times indeed. Yeah, yeah. and the style and the fashion. I mean, oh, yeah. it's a whole thing. When I look at that footage, I'm like, I. I dressed some, I had some cool outfits going. You yeah, know? you did. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I'm sure you still do. I know. Well, you look pretty cute today. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> I love your nails. <laughs> oh, thanks, way. Jim. Thanks. You're very spiff. Thanks. Look at you. Sp How about mine? I just yeah. I bit them off this morning. <laughs> <laughs> so they have I to I chewed be. them up this morning. <laughs> yes. Yep, they had have... a couple chip chap chews this yes. morning. Yes. I heard they were talking about a live action Powerpuff Girls. You know anything they about that? They started doing it, but I don't know if it ever happened. Because of the I strike? Think they... No, I think they started doing way before that, and mm. I just think it was, I don't know, but it, I think there were, some ca there were some things, and they had to recast or reshoot, or I'm really quoting it all wrong, probably, mm. but I know there was, there was something, I don't know what happened with it, to be honest, and I know they did a redo of the Powerpuff Girls, mm. but they didn't use any of the original voices, and yeah. I don't think that happened, I think it, it kind of fell, it kind yeah, of folded. Yeah, that didn't go anywhere, did it? No, I mean, but that it that's aired what, and no, I don't think away. so. I don't but, even... but Craig McCracken wasn't a part of it, and he mm. said if he did it, I'm pretty sure he would he would want it to be the original way. He oh, was all yeah. he was all like, "Why aren't we using our girls?" So he was like all in support of that. But the network changed it up a little, and sometimes they do that, which is and Paul McCracken is who for anybody who the doesn't create, know. Paul McCracken is the creator of Powerpuff Girls. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So are you still doing Winnie the Poohs for different um, things? Right. Well, just yeah, it's diff for different things mm -hmm. of all things in the wide world i uh, was it the, i was i was the opening act now that i'm thinking of it right for uh prince the artist the king formerly known as prince yeah charles he's uh, he's king charles now by the way oh and uh and so Pooh and piglet go knocking on a door at buckingham palace and open it up and i can't remember the line it was a lot of people don't know but his majesty is very fond of red squirrels <laughs> and oftentimes, and then he opens the door, and a thousand red squirrels run into the palace. And uh, and this is for the and, coronation. Yeah, That's and this funny. is for the coronation. Yeah, and then, uh, and but uh, what was the line? His Majesty is blah blah blah. He's I don't know. Now he's really royal. I don't know what it was. I can't remember. But by all means, let us know, uh, internet or wherever you are. <laughs> I don't even know where to look. <laughs> but anyway. Um, but it was really, really cool. And then Lionel Richie came out and he sang. Wow. So, He's one of yeah. my favorite. I mean, yeah. like I have all the old Lionel Richie records. And yeah, 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 yeah. Penny Lover. Well, he's an old friend of yours. Yeah, oh, yeah. Really? I went to school with his son, Miles. Yeah. yeah. We were good friends. Is that Nicole Richie's brother? Yes. Or, yeah. Yeah. He's amazing. He's yeah. really one of my favorite, really. Yeah. Him in like Chicago back then. And like they were like, mm -hmm. yeah. He's oh, great. Yeah. 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 I was just telling Jim last week when we were flying out to uh, wherever we went. Where did yeah. we go last week? Good old somewhere. Yeah. Where? <laughs> Little Rock, Arkansas. Are you going with him on those cons? Is that yeah, oh, yeah. great? So we'll, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll take this on the road and set up and do, oh, the, my God, do that's the podcast perfect. on the road. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. perfect. But I was telling Jim that we were. I was flying one time with Lionel Richie and we go in to LAX mm -hmm. and they the security... They come out and they put like these red tags on the bag. Yeah. And then they open up a door behind the ticket counter. And then we just walked through, didn't go through security or anything, and then just walked straight onto the plane. It was the most mm -hmm. bizarre thing ever. It was, was like, that because you had a, what was it? It was, this, it, it was the Because it was Lionel Richie. That was a Lionel Richie. Yeah, this was with Lionel Richie. Oh my yeah, gosh. Like, well, that's like the high end VIP stuff, I think. Right? Yeah. yeah. It's like, what kind of fast pass do I need for that? He's a, Human pass key. That's beyond TSA pre-check. I wonder what yeah, that's... Yeah. I wonder, yeah, yeah, I wonder... I mean, I remember, like, I think you can... Yeah, that's really, like... That's where we all... We, that's really great. Yeah. I mean, I know there's global and there's clear, but that's a, that's a whole other yeah, level. Yeah, yeah, that's a whole Yeah, I mean, Lionel Richie, you know, I'm sure that they have to do that for some people. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I can't imagine, e even to this day, Paul McCartney or Ringo being able to go anywhere. They might yeah. as well have their own jet. I'm sure they do anyway. Yeah. yeah. Because how could he walk through even they at his no, age? They can't. You couldn't. Yeah. I, I wouldn't be able. I don't wouldn't know. What I'm sure I would that's do. why they have it, and they probably set it up in advance when they do their yeah. Yeah. and stuff. And Jim will get stopped in the <laughs> yeah. airport. And like, 
Yeah, yeah uh, oddly some, enough, yeah. Yeah. You always kind of see the gl- yeah. the glance too, like they'll double take yeah, and then they'll gonna... come up and be like, is it, yeah, <laughs> is yeah, it yeah, really yeah. you? <laughs> when you walk by, it's, p- people go. <laughs> and they make that face like. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> and then they're like waving over all their. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 And they yeah. go, you know, easy daily, don't yeah. you? And they go, yeah, that's true. That's I, I thought so. so. Funny. Yeah. So, <laughs> so thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> for that little okay. brush with fame. Or they go, are you Tara Strong? I'm like, nope. <laughs> and they say it to her too, like, E.G. Daly? She's like, nope. <laughs> Don't know her. Yeah, never heard of her. Oh, God, that's funny. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I get that, but it's... Uh, weren't you Larry and the Three Stooges? Mm, yeah, yeah, that was me. <laughs> Did we go to high school together, you look really... Yeah. No, yeah, yeah. that was Valley Girl. You think I'm your yeah. friend. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was in Valley Girl. I Did was, we go to high school A together. lot of people think that because of like... Valley Girl was like such a you know, high school friends, movie. And so people would always be like, you look so familiar. I feel like you, you look like that girl. You look like that girl, that woman. She's probably older now. Each day I'm like, yeah, that's me. Yeah. I'm the older one. Yeah. That's yeah. Me. Uh-huh. Well, it's a weird phenomenon when you see a celebrity. Cause like you really do feel like, you know, them, yeah. you know, you've yeah. seen their face yeah, so much. Do. And like the only other experience yeah. is people from your past. Yeah. You know? So when you see, so it's like, wait, why do I know this person? Yeah. 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 It's a kind of confusing thing. Some people get it right away and some people just feel the familiarity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I remember the very, very first job I ever did in the business was Dumbo Circus. That was for Disney Channel. You can't even find them now. I don't think they saved them, but it was uh-huh. Disney Channel just opened up uh-huh. like 85. And um, Hal Smith, the great Hal Smith, God bless him. He was uh, the original owl in Winnie the Pooh. Oh. And he was also Otis Campbell. Mm-hmm. On a, the Andy Griffith show, The mm-hmm. Town Drunk. Oh, you know. Okay. And oh, uh, wow. He remember? Yeah. <laughs> and he'd go and lock himself up in the jail, and Barney and Andy would let him out in the morning. And uh, my brother's, my brother Terry's best friend, Dave Simon, was there at, the, at one of the recordings, and he goes up to Hal Smith and he goes, "Listen, I don't want to offend you, and I don't want to hurt your feelings, because I think you're a really cool old dude, but." You look just like that guy that was on the Andy Griffith <laughs> show. <laughs> and he goes, are you t- talking about Otis Kebbell? And he goes, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I just kind of stepped yeah. in a little that bit. that happens. Yeah. Yeah, that fecal happens. matter occurs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That happens. Are yeah. you Jim Cummings? I used to be. Yeah. yeah. You look like that E.G. Daily girl, except for she's. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Except I'm cuter. Yeah. Yeah, that's what you said. Yeah, people say that about me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Are you looking for Tara? She's over there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well she she'll be uh she'll be out here today. So great. Yeah, yeah. she lives right near here. Malibu's so close for her. Yeah, yeah, not too far. Yeah. Yes, we're here on the luxurious mountaintop in Thousand So Oaks. nice. Anyway. Thousand Oaks is great. I really <laughs> no, like, I like I it. Too. Yeah, it is nice out here. Yeah. Yeah, but we don't really live there, so No, don't, you don't live here. Don't go uh, looking for don't it. look yeah, don't <laughs> don't look too closely. <laughs> Oh. Yikes. Oh, man. Yeah. Speaking of, uh, oh, you mentioned Pee Wee Herman earlier. Yeah. Did you stay in contact with Paul yeah. Rubens? Yeah. So yeah. How, how yeah, did you God take bless that? Him. I know. You know, I really love Paul. Like, he's been a really dear, sweet kind of friend for decades now. Mm-hmm. Like, it's that thing. You work with somebody and then you just stay. Plus, we would do a lot of events together and cons, and mm-hmm. sometimes they would screen he was a big adventure at the Hollywood Cinespia okay, Cemetery, yeah. which was like one of their biggest movies. Yeah. And so many years we would always go do that mm-hmm. and um, greet the audience. And we, Paul would always be like, let's go to dinner first. So he's just been a real sweet friend or he's come over to my house and we've hung out. But to be honest, like I kind of knew something was going on. I knew he was working on a documentary. Mm. So that's what's so beautiful is he's been, he's got hundreds and hundreds of hours for a documentary that oh, they're wow. that they're still putting compiling that he's he was part of the whole thing. Mm-hmm. So now the team is going to pull a thing together, but I sort of felt like um I could feel like there were events and things where he was like, "No, I'm like, are you, do you want to do this thing, Paul? Are we going to do this thing or we would have a con scheduled?" Mm. Sometimes they liked it when Pee Wee and Dottie were there. Oh, sure. And then he would cancel and I just kept thinking like something's a little bit off or you know what I mean? He was it was yeah. very like you know, it was very like, you just didn't know. And, and certain appearances he didn't do. And then I texted him like probably a month before he passed. And I, mm. and I just said, hi, honey, like, are you going to be yeah. going to the cemetery screening? There were, they asked if I'd come and are you going to, are we going to do it again this year? And all he said was, hi, no. 
Oh. You know, and then of course weeks later I find out he passed away. So I'm glad I had a little connection with him before, but I I didn't know he was dying. I don't yeah. think any a lot of people didn't know. And I, and he's such a private person. I don't think that um, he let any a lot of people in because he's such a giver. Yeah. That I don't think he would want attention on him like that. And yeah. I think right. Pee Wee Herman lives on as this young person in everybody's eyes. And Paul's sort of like, I think he came to the world, created this amazing childlike character, mm -hmm. gave everybody this content that will be around oh, yeah. forever. Like, you know, like a classic, like Howdy Doody or like one of those characters that will be forever that's and a, ever. That's a good way to put and it. And then, you know, you know, left, you know, and, yeah. and did it without needing a bunch of people like, you know, making that the focal point. Yeah. Cause right. Because it could have been like, oh, he's sick, oh, he's sick, oh, he's sick, oh, he's sick. Right. But, you know, it wasn't Yeah, that's kind of like that. Robin Williams took that, uh, yeah. that tact. He goes, oh, God. I get attention yeah. for everything in the world, and now I'm going to get attention for this. Yeah, he didn't mm. go. Yeah, mm. it's yeah. funny because I worked with Robin on um, on Happy oh. Feet in in Australia for mm. oh that's right for about a month, oh, and I that's spent cool. a lot of time with him and his um, wife. Mm -hmm. um, they weren't married at this point yet; they were mm -hmm. engaged. But you know, you could feel how exhausting it was to even be Robin Williams. Yeah, and that kind of need to be. On, on, yeah. which I thank God that I, I don't have that anymore. Yeah. Like I, when I was younger, I probably wanted to be on. And yeah, I was working I, the, I did. You know what but I mean? Yeah, uh, yeah. I working sure the do. sexuality for me that was my thing. Like, oh, that was me all over. <laughs> 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 but you know, it's like that's exhausting. And then as you get yeah. older, you're like, I don't have time for that, and you don't have time yeah. for bullshit. But I could feel Robin when we were doing Happy mm -hmm. Feet that kind of energy that was just like. It was so tiring. And sometimes he'd just have to go lie. They had a bed on this big sound stage and he would just lie down. And mm. I would just want to like put my hands on him and just be like, it's all good. Oh. I like, take a breath. And mm. we would go to dinners and stuff. And I think mm -hmm. he he liked going with the small. We would go like Elijah Wood and I and, and his um, now wife and just to a very mellow because he knew it was not going to be like you have to be on for everybody. You yeah. could just relax. So, yes. Yeah, well, it'd be nice to know somebody well enough that you don't have to be on for them. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. That we need those people. It's tiring. Yeah, we, yeah, we do. Yeah. But like you're saying, in the end, I don't think that I think that that wasn't what he wanted to be known for, you know. Of course yeah. they blow that up at the end anyway a little, but it wasn't how he existed when he was around. Mm -hmm. Like Yeah, well you can't bet that would be exhausting. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Oh my God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I remember uh working with Robin, uh, or not working with Robin, but working with Jonathan Winters mm -hmm. any number of times. And I remember that Robin said that uh, <clears throat> Jonathan Winters was his mentor. He was his idol. He mm -hmm. was this and that. And and I could see it because Jonathan, it, we did um, The Addams Family okay. uh, cartoon. Okay, cool. And uh, Rip Taylor was there, and he was Uncle Fester. Was that with Debbie Derryberry? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the one. And um, and Jeannie Elias and and all all these folks were on. It was a yeah. great show, and um, Pat Fraley was in there. But uh, I re I remember uh, what's his name? He told, he told me hand him a drumstick because I used to walk around with drumsticks yes, all the we time. Yes, You still do. Yeah, I still do. And uh, <laughs> and he's and so he handed like me. A big tooth I handed him one drumstick, and he goes, "Oh, Kimosabi. Oh, me have to go and me." And he was all of a sudden he was he was a thing, and he goes, "Oh, do me a favor, don't move." God, take that! And he did all this. Let me try that. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. We learn from each Ow. other. Okay. Anyway, thanks. But, I want to uh, do a TikTok like that yeah. with you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I have a big, big, stupid suck a plunger. Yeah. That would be good. Yeah. Yeah. That's so funny. There we go. <laughs> yeah, but that, I could never do that one. Can you do that one? I, I could do. Ow! No. <laughs> yeah. No. I could. That's the closest. I could do I this. Could. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> I used to be able to. Yeah, I could do that too. Isn't this entertaining? <laughs> <laughs> Is everybody happy? That. Good. Yeah, I love good, that. Good, good, good. Rock, rock, rock. Oh, all right. I'll do my arm farts. No, I won't. <laughs> it's so silly. Class out the wazoo, huh? <laughs> oh, so man. Fun. Somebody shoot me. <laughs> oh, very cool. You just got shot twice. Well, yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the, the plunger didn't count. Uh, yeah. Since we're since we're doing the sound effects right now, we like to do this thing on 
oh. tuned in with Jim Cummings and we'll do a, mm -hmm. a character line from each of you and then we'll reverse the roles. So like Jim will give you a line of one of his characters and then you do it. Who would you say is your most popular character? I mean, Tommy Pickles. Probably. Tommy Pickles, yeah. yeah, I would say. Yeah. Would you yeah. want to do that? Would, Babe, you would do I? That Hell yeah. Would I? <laughs> I'm here for you guys. Whatever. Let's do it. Yeah, okay. So, all right, then. What do uh, I do? I do a line of yours? Yeah, you do or you do a line of yours, and then I'll- oh, Okay, got it. I'll have Darkwing or Pooh. Yeah, you'll repeat feed each it. other a I line wanna, and vice I versa. This? I got it. I'm filming yeah, it. Yeah. I don't care. Look up a really good one. <laughs> I don't care what you say. I'm doing She's it. looking up an R-rated one, I'm, I'm afraid. So, you just want me to do one of my lines? Sure. Yeah. Just a signature line, okay. something that everybody would know. Here we go. Um, Hold on. <laughs> you get the right yummy. Is it on Fabulous? Yeah. Okay. Oh, a baby's got to do what a baby's got to do. No, oh, a baby's got to do what a baby's got to do. Get dangerous. <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> I want to hear Pooh do that one. I was waiting for Pooh. Okay, let's do one more. We're doing it. Hold on to your diapers. We're going in. Oh, bother. A baby's got a poo. What a baby's got a poo. <laughs> Not, I think I said it wrong. That is not the line. You said the wrong line. <laughs> I know. I know. That's hilarious. I couldn't tell what you said. <laughs> Let me do it again. Okay. A baby's got to do what a baby's got to do. What do you think, poo? A baby's got to poo what a baby's got to poo. That's not the line. <laughs> so cute. That's cute. Uh, quiet over there. Quiet. Oh, that's a cold pouch. Well, see. Whatever that is. It's a pouch. Oh, yes. Yeah. And then do you want to give E.G. one of them? Yeah, let me do one. So, okay. Let's see. Uh, I am the terror that flaps in the night. I am the terror that flaps in the night. Doesn't sound very terrorish, <laughs> does it? <laughs> let's do it. I'll do, a, I'll do it as Buttercup. Hold on a minute. Yes. I'm going to capture that one, too, because it's too good not to. Okay. I am oh, the terror. Hold on. Two. She am the terror. Dang it. Oh, dang it. Okay. Now we're in Italy. <laughs> I am the terror that flaps in the night. I am the terror that flaps in the night. Oh, I meant to do it as Buttercup. I am the terror that flaps in the night. Wow, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> that's pretty good. Yeah, two for one. Were you ever on um, Duckman? Did you ever do any of that? One. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. That was fun. With, with Jason. Yeah. Right, Alexander? Yeah, yeah I was one of the two-headed duck. Weirdest combo. animation ever. So weird. It was cool. Yeah, it was. It was Ahmed Zappa and... What was weird about it? I never saw it. It was just kind of, they had these two-headed <sighs> duck, and they were strange, but it was really clever. Yeah, it looks like a fifth grader. Mm. A little bit, kind of angular, kind of, yeah. sharp lines. Yeah, yeah, But it yeah. was a good cast. It was like Jason Alexander and Ahmed Zappa, and was it Ahmed mm. or Dweezil? No, it was Dweezil. Dweezil. It was Dweezil Zappa. Dweezil. Yeah. Oh, I remember. I just looked Dana it up. Dana Hill, I who remember God that. bless her, passed away, but she mm. was yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, bless her heart. Yeah. Good old Dana. yeah. She was she was a pistol. She was. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> With from Goof Troop. Yeah, from Goof Troop. Yeah. Um and I think you did a few goof troops here and there. I think I did, yeah. Yeah. There's been so many I remember you were a you and Pammy Siegel. Yeah. And uh, Camp were, Candy? No. No, but uh, we, the three of you were bad guys on a Darkwing episode, I oh. think. Oh. Yes. The guys on the interwebs would know. Yeah. Help us out, interwebs. Yeah. Was it um, Huey Dewey Louie? No, Quack Pack? No. It was little, three little, it was little kids though, right? Yeah. 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 I don't remember. But they, they were, were, all you, kind but of they were like little tough kids or something. Yeah. I can't remember. Yeah. Did you ever do Woody Woodpecker, the newer? Uh, no. Not uh, Head and Splinter? That was one. Not I. She goes for the intellectual type, such as myself. <laughs> 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 yeah, that was sweet. You give good, you give good pissed off and and sarcastic. <laughs> so fun, right? Oh God, yeah. It's such a silly job, but it's just such a, you know what I mean? It's so mm -hmm. fun. It's I was the thinking stuff like used to get me kicked out of class. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or sometimes I like sit around and I go like like I think about like I just sit around and I'll be like if I'm bored and I'll be like like you're pouring water. <laughs> yeah. and I do these weird things in my mouth. I'm like, what am I doing? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, what is happening here? Like, I, I, yeah. or I'll hear some sound and I'll be like, <laughs> like steaming a coffee. And I'm like, I, I sit there. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, what? 
where, where is this going, bro? I do that too, but I just stick a microphone here <laughs> and I drink a Coke. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, 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 one of my weird things I've always done is. Oh my God. I'm going to try. I'm it. talking about Shaft. That's <laughs> anyway, so good. you know, and um, in the movie Princess and the Frog, uh, gonna take you there. My little guy Ray, the the Firefly, he has a song, uh, gonna take you there, and um, and I started doing that at the beginning of the song, and I thought, well, they'll never leave it in, and they left it in. <gasps> That's so fun. So it's kind of cool. I yeah. love that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, have you ever? Because I am really guilty of this. Uh, have you ever tried to sneak stuff in? Like, like this, like slightly risque, like uh, and and to just sneak it past the censors. You know, like on a on a cartoon. On, on any, yeah. You know, oh, honestly, yeah, yeah. I either play full on babies in baby safe shows, or yeah. I did do racy shows where you could yeah. just go crazy. But oh, well, some yeah. of mine, like there wasn't like the racy stuff was in between takes, and somebody's got some really hilarious uh, oh, voiceover sessions. Oh, well, sessions. that's true. Like yeah. when we did Powerpuff Girls, Tara and I, and, yeah. That whole and and uh, Kathleen Kath, Kathy Cavadini, yeah, Cavadini, like the stuff that was going off behind was really really kind of funny. Yeah, yeah. Like it was like everybody had like my thing was I would clean my purse during a session all the time, so Tara would make fun of me. She'd yeah, be like, yeah. "What the hell are you doing?" I'm like, pour my whole purse out, and I just sit there like, yeah, yeah, yeah organizing oh, in between and Tara, providing little yeah, walla. <laughs> bring that up to her. She'll, walla. she'll talk about. <laughs> oh, God. But, you know, the stuff behind the scenes was where we got like, "Fuck you, no, fuck you," yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, you bitch. You know, in our yeah. characters. Yeah. Well, you know, I uh, I, I snuck in. I, I I can't remember. I think it was, I don't know if it was Timon and Pumbaa, or something. They they ran into these yeah. coyotes, and they were supposed to be hillbillies. And um, hillbillies. Yeah, and they and I can't remember the context, but anyway, I was playing these twin hillbilly wolves Let me or hear dogs. Let and, me hear. Em. And and I said, "Well, it ain't, it ain't don't belong to me. It ain't mine. It must be urine." <laughs> and and uh, they and they <laughs> made sure. it all the way up to the to the to the end. They're going into final production. They go, "Yeah, well, you got to come back in here." <laughs> and, and, and I go, oh my God. "But but why?" But it's so funny. And they, you know, see. I said, we can't say it must be urine. And I said, oh. Yeah, see, some shows you can, you can get. Yeah. So I like... said, I don't know what the shit this is. And then, <laughs> <laughs> now so when that, kept... that was okay. Oh, great. Yeah, shit that, was okay, kept... but urine was and not in okay. The, and, then, huh. uh, and they kept the fart choke in Hakuna Matata. <laughs> <laughs> I, wrote the, uh. I, wrote the, I wrote like a verse in Hakuna Matata, Lion King. Uh. Yeah. And, uh, and one of my favorites, and I really can't believe this made it but it was in Christopher Robin the movie mm-hmm. with Ewan McGregor live ac- live action poop and uh there's uh Maddie the little girl gets stopped by a guy who thinks these dolls are talking and he's driving a crescent and there's a cop there and and he's oh now oh, you must be drunk or you're doing this or that you know and he and and she says all right little girl you can go away and she says thank you officer and I go thank you Orifice. <laughs> <laughs> I call That's him an Orifice. Yeah. it's in the movie Oh. Is it really? Yeah, it's oh. in the movie. Officer. Yeah. Yeah, that's and, uh, Orifice. Oh gosh, I think Thank I you, read. Orificer. Yeah, <laughs> Orificer. So, yeah. So, if you see that. So fun. Yeah. Yeah, you're welcome. Little Easter yeah, there egg. You go. You're welcome, world. <laughs> Speaking of funny. sneaking through things through sensors, do you uh, guys remember when they first allowed shit to be on TV? Like the word? The word? Yeah. I don't remember when that happened. It was like in the mm-hmm. early 2000s. Wow. Yeah, yeah that's I remember because South Park, they went and ran with it and they had an episode where they oh, said I didn't know that. Like all they over a hundred times and they uh, were like, we're going to say it as much as we can. I never can. realized oh, that that wow. wasn't allowed, Yeah, but I guess so. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I guess Jeez. we're not allowed to say shit, right? <laughs> <laughs> I remember there was a show, a don't game say show, it. a game show called You Don't Say and Michael Landon was on there and he was trying to uh, rhyme something with ham. And he said, oh, dang. And, and they go, well, well, that's not what you really want to say. He goes, yeah, but I, I'm not going to get thrown off the TV. Mm. So damn yeah. would have gotten you wow. like out of here. Yeah. Wow. You know, we're not putting up with that. Wow. But that's got to be. I mean, I was, I was a little kid. Yeah. It was yeah. in the 60s. But it was, uh, but in the 60s, you'd think it would have been, because that's when everything went to hell on a handbasket. Yeah. You'd think it would have, damn, would have been okay. That's yeah. really, that sounds like a religious thing there. Some yeah. Kind of religious so, uh, 
Now we say damn all the time. Yeah, yeah. you can damn swear and everything, but God censorship's kind of making its rounds, you know, with social media and everything. And now there's oh. so many different things. Like, mm -hmm. you know, people say like self-delete instead of saying, you know, suicide. And yeah, like, yeah. you know, there's all these Ooh. new words. Oh, you're, that you can't you're unaliving yeah. yourself. Unaliving, yeah. So weird, that's weird. not a real thing. Yeah, people say that. Uh, unaliving. Yeah. For sure. They're, they say yeah. they're somebody they knew unalived themselves. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's a very yeah. interesting concept, but it's, <laughs> but it's very kind of accurate. Oh, God. Yeah, but it's interesting how everything kind of comes full circle. And I don't know if you guys feel it, but like this this new, you know, the 2020s is starting to feel like the 90s again. Like there's like all this like, you know, revamping of old cartoons yeah. and yeah. even the fashion, you know, yeah. like people wearing baggy yeah. clothes again. And yeah. Everything's highlighter colors again. I just don't yeah. get rid of mine and then this all comes right back. Like right. I literally yeah. found a pair of like Frankie B um, little low waisted like jeans oh, that i that i used to wear jeans, right they're just short Were they called peanut jeans uh, they're they're just kind of like low rise like but i literally like my daughters think this stuff is so cold they're like mom this stuff is so cool i'm like i've had it since i was 20 like yeah that's yeah. like 40 it's years vintage and luckily i'm still can fit in them because like i'm like <laughs> yeah, I can, yeah, yeah my kids think can. it's really they're like look at these cool things i'm like they're in my closet right now go yeah. get them yeah, yeah. The elastic may be a little weird yeah but, the, yeah they're vintage yeah, they're mm -hmm. vintage. Yeah, I'm vintage. No. Right? <laughs> but it feels weird because to me, they're just like my cool jeans. I don't think of them like, yeah. oh, these are old and vintage. And then I'm like, they are old and vintage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I still have, uh, I haven't tried it on, although, which is probably good. But I have my high school graduation oh, shirt. Okay. Still. Wow. And uh, and every That's cute. 10 years, I'll try to put it on. I haven't done it in 10 What years, color is so. it, Jim? It's navy blue and it's got white pinstripes. It looks like a gangster. And then I had yeah. a white tie. Wow. Because uh, being from Youngstown, Ohio, some of my heroes were like hitmen. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> so uh, everybody from Youngstown watching this, no, it's true. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's right about that. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Especially Scarface. the hitmen. Yeah. Oh, man. Scarface? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you steal stuff. You know, from from people all around you. Have you? Now I know I've done it. I bet you've done it too. Done because uh, I have an, a philosophy. If you do a terrible impression of somebody, everybody knows. Can't even tell who it is. You get a new character. It's free character. Well, yeah, you, yeah. I right? mean, that's how. Yeah, especially like people. Like when I see wow. some little. My friend's kid will come over and he's like, oh, well, there's something really cool going on with my friend outside yeah. and we're going to get some new ice pops later with my mom. And I'm yeah. like, oh my God, that is so good. Bring oh, that yeah, kid yeah. back in here. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, that's a great character. How's it going, son? Yeah, yeah. that's cool. It's really and, fun. And I, I, did, uh, I used to do impressions of my relatives too because, you know, you're safe there. Oh, those are great. Yeah. And but nobody knows and you're just like ripping people's No, uh-uh. Yeah, and and if you do a, a great impression of somebody that's not famous, like I, I always use this example, uh, that when I used to be a deckhand on a riverboat when I was oh. a kid in New Orleans. Wow, that's cool. Uh, obvious career path, but um, but the the first guy that was uh, on there bought my boat. Chef Spaghetti. He was like that. Oh no, no, Chef Piscetti was oh, yeah, Italian. Okay. But it's, it's, it's but uh, <laughs> he's but this guy was a Cajun. <laughs> he was from Napoleonville, yeah. yeah, Louisiana. Yeah, I love that and. And that's just how he talked. So good. And I thought, man, that's that's a great really point. something. And then yeah. a couple of years later, moved to California, and I got cast as Leatherhead, the Cajun alligator in uh, the the mutant uh, the there Ninja Turtles. Yeah, there. there and you go. I just put, and it was a dead on impression of him. And I just put it out there. And I often wondered if his grandkids were sitting around there watching and going, "Hey, Grandpa, come in here. <laughs> <laughs> you see this gator?" You that's, know this guy right here? How cool is that? Yeah, like, I know. So that we'll have so to cool. see. And God rest her soul, my Aunt Grace. She was Lieutenant Spinelli on uh, on yeah, Chippendale's Rescue Rangers. And that's, see, that's just great. how she talks. Yeah, some people just have a really... That's what's so fun. And that's why it's like people always say, how many voices can you do? I go, it's like infinity. Because every, sure. everything can be... Every voice can be uh, a skinny version of it uh -huh. or a chunky version or a... Older or younger or wiser or smarter. It's mm -hmm. like every voice is such a version of yeah. you can expand. It's so much fun. Yeah. And Mel, there was a famous story about Mel Blank and he was, God rest his soul. He was, uh, he was hospitalized. He was not doing that well at the end. And he decided to write down or categorize all the characters he did. And so he would do them, do them, do them. And then he would do a French version, a British version, oh. a German version, an Italian version, so a Swedish good. version. Wow. 
just go on down the line. And then all of a sudden it was multiplied. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you that's, never know. I mean, that's just it. That's he, true, right? He was yeah. so talented. One of the things that mm-hmm. really impressed me was he did this one episode where he did Bugs Bunny imitating Elmer Fudd and then the reverse, Ooh. Elmer Fudd imitating Bugs Bunny. And oh. to me, that has to be like one of the hardest That's things as a voice be. actor wow. to do a character yeah. voice imitating another character that you do. Yeah. You know? Don't ask me to do that one. I, today. Oh, you beat me to the punch. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like well, imitating another character. Yeah, go ahead. Well, I mean, but I don't it, understand. it can even I mean, be like, you know, you know, one of the Rugrats could could be doing <clears throat> Marlena Dietrich or Zsa Zsa Gabor or Eva Gabor. Listen, sister, why don't you move your big fat caboose? It's trying to be like an old 40s movie. <laughs> why I love you, you love me. But you're a lesbian, can't you see? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kate Hepburn, right? <laughs> Who was that? Catherine Hepburn talked yeah. a little like, like this. Yes. Yeah. I don't know. You know. Sometimes my brain can't keep it all together. That's, I know. Like, That's why he was such a very talent. very tricky. Like, you could, know? You, could you imitate Pooh imitating Tigger? I mean, Ooh, I it's really, know. that's the thing. Like, like to me, that's just such just next level. A, like, holy cow. Well, it's like taking oh, a Tigger line who, and doing who, it. In who, your... who, who. Suffering. Wait a minute. That, that's, that's not right. Ooh, I don't know. Yeah, Maybe. because sometimes it's tricky. I'd have to work yeah. on it. Yeah. I did every one time for this college thing and I had to speak in front of all these people. And they had this game they wanted to play where I would answer each of their questions in a different character. Mm-hmm. And sometimes they'd ask me like some random question that the character is just like, it just felt so like off. Like I was like trying to answer questions that, and it literally like threw me, nothing throws me, but that threw me. I was trying mm-hmm. to answer some really intelligent question with like, but I, I tried. I was like, well, you know that if you're having a particular feeling and you're having some old wounds come up, then you need to really listen. You know, it was like, mm. it's like, it's deep shit. That's so cute. I can't stand it. <laughs> <laughs> My God. <laughs> <laughs> You seem to really enjoy doing that. She voice. owns. Do. Yeah. She owns cute. It really makes me feel good. Yeah. Like I could be feeling kind of low energy, or like maybe I'm overthinking about some things. But then, like doing voices really takes you out of your head, and mm. it gets your body energy up. So yeah. it's a very healing thing. Just like singing, you know, like when you sing. Oh yeah. yeah like when yeah. you sing, it it does something to your chemistry. So I think voiceovers is a lot like that for me, especially when you yeah. play a kid. Because yeah. kids are just full of energy and mm. they're just so present and lovely. Yeah. That how can yeah. you not like feel different? And you're you're right about that. Um, I, I I noticed this a long time ago when my older daughters were were little. Uh, we'd be sitting around watching a show, t- cartoon show. If I was in it or not, didn't matter. But if somebody sang, all of a sudden it's time for a song. Yeah. They would get up and and, yeah. and march and walk around. And, yeah. You know, music just elevates. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know the yeah. the song just elevates everything. Yeah, it really does. Yeah. yeah. What was the the impetus for the Tommy Pickles voice? Excuse me. You know, I had, I mean, I think it's kind of a known story, but I, I'd never done voiceover in my life. I was mm. doing it on camera from the time mm. I graduated. Oh, yeah. From the time before high school ended, I was doing on camera and I didn't go to college. I was just doing movies and television. Mm. And then I was, I did a play. Someone asked me to do a play. And in that play, I had to do all these different age ranges of a character because it was the play was about a female wrestler. And so each round yeah. of the play, I had to age up. Mm. So they cast me in and I was like, this is cool. You know, I really just wanted to be singing and it was a musical. So I said, okay. yes. And I love that EG is cast as a, a, wrest- a wrestler. It was perfect. <laughs> I was perfect. Flipping, I was flipping over like- I could like, see her throwing people around the room. And I had to learn how to do Irish <laughs> head mares and belly flops. And, but mm. anyway, um, you know, trying to figure out what was the original question so i stay on point. <laughs> just the the impetus of the tommy pickles voice like yeah, the creation so, of so it so what happened was like in the play i had to be a baby and then a five-year-old and a 10-year-old and that's where i you know somebody heard heard me and was like you really like you do these kid sounds and kid voices so um true you know mm-hmm. and to me that was one of my funny things that I like to do was to imitate, especially like kids, like, especially when they're like, mom, mom, I, I really, I really, um, think that, um, we're not supposed to have yeah, that, yeah, right? Yeah. You know, everything is a little bit strange yeah. and the breathing pattern. So mm-hmm. I was fascinated with that just naturally for some reason, I found it really sweet and mm-hmm. very special. And so Tommy Pickles, like, you know, when I was a little kid, when I was like in elementary school, I would do like voices, like with my best friend. I would just like do voices. I would mm. be like, 
ah, you know, Farshid, get away from the water fountain. You know, I would just like, I would, I was just using voices. So it's almost like, um, I just did it. And so then when I went on this audition for my first audition ever, because really? I got, mm. I got an agent at that play where I had to change wow. my voice around. And then he was like, you should go on this one audition. Well, you should try it. And I was like, okay. You know, I was like, I, I was like, I didn't think like, I want to be a famous cartoon or yeah. I yeah. was an actress and a singer. So I was like, oh, I'll say, I'll say, I'll try it. Why not? You know, yeah, that's sure. where like the best stuff happens. It's got a microphone. When, yeah. Where the <laughs> best things happen were when I wasn't trying to make anything happen, but I was just saying yes to an opportunity that mm -hmm. came my yeah. way. And so I, I, I said, I would go on this audition and when they showed me the claymation of Tommy Pickles, I was like, I'd never remember. I've never done a cartoon audition before. It was my first one. And I was like, hmm. I looked at the claymation and his mouth was kind of wide and floppy and mm -hmm. his head was round. And <laughs> I big round head. Yeah. And yeah. I just kind of thought, oh, that's really not, that's really cool, Angelica. Like everything was a little mm -hmm. messy here. And I just, yeah. and that's how it happened. And I mm -hmm. booked. That job, which was my first audition in a cartoon, wow. for a cartoon audition in my entire life. Wow. That's great. And then that was the beginning of like this whole turnaround in my career. When I started booking, like there was literally a time where I was doing like eight series a week. Dang. I would go from a, yeah. from a Rugrats to a, this job, Powerpuff, Duck, uh, DuckTales. Um, you know, I would just, on and on, and Juggle yeah. Coms, like I would just, I started booking all these jobs because it was like ignorance is bliss. I didn't really mm. know what it was, but every time I went in for, to read for something, they'd be like, you booked it. And I was like, oh, I booked it. I was like, I couldn't fathom that it was happening so easily. Wow. Mm -hmm. And then Tommy Pickles just like blew up, you know? And mm -hmm. so I think it was really just that, that just came from like a genuine love of like kids' voices and the impediments that children have and that whole thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 Well, that, that makes it real. Yeah. You know, all those little foibles. All those it little... does. Yeah. And that's a thing. Like when Tommy Pickles was actually already cast by someone. So I was a replacement, but not that many people know. Oh, wow. I didn't know But that. yeah, there was another girl they cast, but I guess they didn't, they, they didn't feel the voice was quite right. Mm -hmm. So then when I went in to read, they were like, we're replacing this girl's voice. Ooh. And I was like, I didn't really want to hear her voice mm -hmm. because sometimes I don't want to yeah, be. Yeah. Yeah. You but don't. I had to because it turned out that I had to redo all of first the first season because they had already oh, recorded the sure, entire sure. season. Wow. You had to loop over. Which was great. Because, had to redo it. Yeah, yeah, it was fine for me because I'm a singer. So I was like, okay, get me tapes of all of her line reads mm -hmm. and all of her. Uh, so they did. They gave me a little reference of all of her line reads. Mm -hmm. And then I knew that her voice, though, it was maybe like, a baby's got to do what a baby's got to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if her rhythm was that, yeah. then I would be like, a baby's got to do what a baby's got to do. You know, I would just, yeah, yeah, I was, I was able to ca catch did all Did your her. own thing, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I changed the voice, but the rhythms of all of her lines is what made me blast through um, mm -hmm. redubbing all of her lines because I just listened to it like a singer, like I'm yeah. listening to a uh -huh. song. Um, I don't like you, Chucky. I don't like you, Chucky. You know, I just, yeah. I just listened to like each one was a song and I just, I just kept doing line by line wow. as I memorized the pacing. So I had, cause I had to loop them all. Yeah. Mm. Boy, I had the exact same experience. With which one? With the, uh, uh, the movie, movie Christopher Robin. I wasn't the original guy doing Tigger. Oh, oh. Yeah. That's what I said. Oh. Take them know. all. Take all the jobs. Why don't you? Know, you? No, 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 no. Poo. But they, uh, I guess I won't even say that his name, but uh, it was a very bodacious British actor uh, on screen. And um, his Tigger just came off like, uh, I don't know, Rodney Dangerfield and then a little... It's different. Groucho. Yeah. Hey, yeah. I'm Tigger, okay? Yeah. Oh, T-I double go, er, you yeah, get yeah, me? Yeah, 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 <laughs> And it was like, uh, <laughs> and I got Tigger Dangerfield, you know? And I was, but I was stuck with tigger the rhythm. Tigger Dangerfield? Yeah. You yeah. know, that, yeah. and that, because that's, I think, because you're a singer, I'm a singer. Yeah. And that's how it sounds to me. That's how yeah. I glom on to things. Yeah, that's it. You know. Even even with a, you know, particular voice. Oh, oh yeah. honey, why don't you call your husband? You uh -huh. know, like, mm. it's like a rhythm or it's like a weird sound. Or See, that could have been an oboe. <laughs> See, that's where our brains go. Yeah, it is. Sound is like, triggers yeah. you to think like, it's really, it's very cool. It's a very special, cool job. Yeah, very special. yeah, it really is, and you yeah. do it so well. You do it so well. No, you do. No, you. I said it first. You, you, oh. you. And then, how'd you feel when they asked you to voice a pig? 
Yeah. Um, That's first how she of all, felt. <laughs> uh, I had a pig. Maybe. Really? Yeah. Um, that was, you know, it, it, to me, it's not really a pig. It's a little boy. Yeah. In yeah. the pigs, you know, as a pig. But, you know, we don't even look at him as like, I'm, I mean, of course, I love playing animals because yeah. I don't get to play an animal in real life. But in cartoon land, I get to play all kinds of things. Yeah, yeah, I right. could play a bottle, a flower, <laughs> you know what I mean? A microphone. Yeah. Hey, everybody, let's talk like you're on the microphone. You know, it's like, <laughs> and, you know, it's like, that's what's so fun. And so playing Babe was not really to me like playing a, a pig. It was like getting to play a very deep, deep, a deep souled little kid. Yeah, a sweetie. You know, a little sweetheart. Oh, yeah. uh, well, I was looking for my mama. Do you happen to know where she is? Uh, yeah. He has mm, a little list. So He's precious sweet. And dear. Yeah. But, you know, I did Babe 2. Mm -hmm. And Babe yeah. 1 was my friend, Christine Kavanaugh. Christine yeah. Kavanaugh, who, you know. Uh, yeah, mine too. Gosling. She yeah, was my there you daughter. go. There you go. Yeah. yeah and yeah, so, you know, they, they needed to replace her for whatever reasons they they didn't do the second one mm -hmm. and and um you know i'd already worked with chris on rugrats so i i, already, mm -hmm. I kind of had, i actually turned that role down at first babe mm -hmm. i turned it down because they were trying to negotiate with chris and her team for babe too mm -hmm. and so i was like whoa i'm gonna get in the middle of that yeah you don't want to mess and with so that. i i yeah you don't want to be a scab you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And sag. but i turned it down but i said i would love to do another role in babe I was like, there's the boy role. There's another boy like for a mm. monkey, a monkey. And they were like, okay. Mm. So I read for that and I booked that. Oh, yeah. And then they said, but we're still going to need to replace Chris's role because they're not coming up with, they couldn't, they couldn't work out couldn't, a deal. Couldn't get to, yeah. Whatever it was. And, um, and I said, okay, well, at least I'm not, I didn't intercept in, in any way and step yeah. on anyone's toes. And then they recast her part. And then like a week before uh, we got, a week before we were doing um, Babe, the director called me up and was like, Miss Stady, we really love your voice for this other character. However, we've all been listening to the tapes and you really do sound like babe. Mm -hmm. You really are like the babe voice for us. Mm. And I was like, and they said, but we've already cast. So how do you feel? And at that point I was like, okay, I will do this role now because now mm -hmm. I know I didn't, I wasn't the yeah. person or thing or like, all you can pay me. I'll do it for way less money and I'll do it. Just yeah, it was yeah, none yeah. of that. There's and I just some felt of that going around. Yeah. I didn't do it. And so I felt good about doing it. And, like I said, Babe is just a beautiful... And I said, I don't want to imitate Chris. I already know my voice has a similar texture. Mm. You know, there's that ra there's a raspy mm -hmm. texture. But I was like, I don't want to imitate her. I, I, I would limit how I can feel on this well, character. I you did it beautifully. It Thanks. was really beautiful. Thanks. But I did listen to her enough sure. to capture, like, there was a yeah, little lilt in the and voice. The, yeah. the, the personality. Yeah. La 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 I know that little cracky. Well, you know, and you have to be a good singer in order to sing cutely, slightly badly, just badly enough till it's cute. You know, that's the trick. That's slightly badly, a little enough bad underneath the badness to be cute. And then it's cute. And then you're cute. And out comes the cute. Yeah. Well, it's like for the little rascals when I was but a lad. Alpha Alpha was the worst singer in the world, and the everybody dug it. Yeah. And you would know about the Little Rascals because... Yeah, I did Froggy. What's the high sign, PD? He does his raspy voice. See how I did What's that? What's the high sign, PD? Yeah. yeah, there it is. I know. You did that. And see, that has to be for you what Taz is for me. Because how can you... You don't want to do that like... <laughs> Wait, that's so fascinating Jim, to me. You don't want to do that all day. Oh, no, to your voice. <laughs> no, that's a hard one. Because that, you know, you're. What the eyesight? It's right there, ripping. So how would they? How did they do that? Would they? Would you have to sync up with the with the actors? That lips? was there was a kid in that movie, and they had yeah. to re. So they that boy was only a little kid, so he right. can't get that deep, crazy yeah. froggy sound. So, yeah. so I basically same thing. I just I had them send me the. References of his voice. Gotcha. With the high sign, Petey. And then I just like grabbed it, threw it in here, lowered it, and had his raspy toe like that. Mm. You know? Yeah. Next. You know. Yeah. So it's not yeah. a fun voice, but it, it's a fun voice, but not for a long, lot of sessions and a lot of right. screening because yeah. it really is falls in a place where there was another character I did where it, there were games that I did mm. sometimes that were right in a really weird, rippy place. Yeah. And yeah. So they just kind of pace you. Yeah. Like, you know, can you save the screaming for the end of the session? And, yeah, that's yeah. what I always tell them. Yeah, but I don't really, 
It doesn't really hurt me that much anymore. I think my chords are so like used to everything. Yeah, me too. Singing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that that's how it was for me and Taz. I, I just said, we got to do it on Friday afternoon. There you go. <laughs> you yeah. Know, Taz get, was get hard. Weekend huh? to, yeah. yeah. And plus, you know, you're a singer, I'm a singer, and I, I think we get a little, I talked about it earlier, a little bit of leather on the chords. Yeah. So they, they're pretty tough at this point. They, they are. Yeah. You know, they're, they're yeah. durable. They are, right? Yeah. Who so. knew we could get, yeah, I think our chords are fatter. Mm hmm yeah. 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 And I'm a big failure because I started, I wanted to be a mime. And Get I, out. Okay, I made that up. But uh, <laughs> the mime. biggest failure ever. Oh. <laughs> Do you have anything you want to you want to advertise or plug any conventions coming up? Um, where can we find you? I have a movie that's coming out on Tubi, I think. It's called uh, The Blonde Experiment. I play a character named Aquarius and it's a really funny pop culture kind of current pop culture funny film. Oh cool. And my character is a inf uh, social media influencer pop singer and it's such a fun movie. How cool. Yeah, it's so much fun. She her name is Aquarius and she Preaches all this spiritual oh, stuff. Oh, I, like, I could just see. Oh, my God. It was perfect for me. You, I, got I was going to wear, gonna say, you must be killing it. It was so fun. I got to wear sparkly outfits and very fun pink things. And oh. it was my favorite. So I did that. And then, um, like I said, I'm working on this documentary, which is a lot of work. And I've got a team of people working with me on that. And that's mm. I'm very excited about that. Because that sort of feels like a next level thing. Like, mm -hmm. from that, I might do. I, I also have like a book I want to do, but I think I'm going to do the documentary first and then yeah. I'll do a book. But mm -hmm. there's a lot of things like that. Cause I feel at this point, like it's time to like share the journey and teach and learn, you know, mm -hmm. have things to share that people yeah. can learn from. I do have a voiceover seminar called Up Close and Personal with EG Daily Voiceover Seminar that's on Amazon um, that I did a little while ago that also teaches the tip, tips, tools, and the how to's of voiceover and also gives like. Great voice demos, great voice directors, great casting directors. It gives some very practical mm. stuff, and that's up on Amazon. And I do have Listen Closely mm -hmm. is up on Amazon. It's the the one woman show that you mm -hmm. saw. So that I filmed and I put that on Amazon. And you know, always working on some kind of music, but right a on. lot. There's a lot of things. Yeah, but yeah. Good for you. Yeah, and you know, just dating the dating world, which is really funny. And <laughs> yeah, online dating, that's my other thing. I'm trying to be proactive and it's not fun. Yeah. You want Tinder? I'm on, no, I got off Tinder because I kept getting like bots. Yeah. They were like, do you like crypto? And I'm like, what the hell? I'm just looking for a <laughs> date for God's sakes. I'm looking for my person and you're asking me about cryptocurrency? What yeah. the they're, hell? They get on, they're like from Nigeria or somewhere and they're like, are you interested in crypto? I'm like, what, what? What's happening here? And then delete. <laughs> so I mean, it's very funny. No, I'm on some other ones, but oh, that's, that's a whole thing in itself. Oh, everybody is out there going, okay, yeah, don't yeah. ask about crypto. <laughs> Do not ask about crypto. <laughs> Got it. It's so you know? weird. It's so or, weird. Or they like send me, they're like, send me a picture of yourself. I'm like, there's seven of them right there. Go look at yeah, them. Yeah. And they send me some naughty Wait, picture. A, a I'm picture like, of what? you? They want yeah, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, that's impossible to find. I mean, red hour, I try to be anonymous online. <laughs> Do you have a phone, yeah. internet, <laughs> you, maybe? Uh, <laughs> Do you want to, yeah. like, chat on the phone, maybe? Yeah. No, let's keep texting. Tell me about your finances. I'm like, what the <laughs> what? hell is happening here? <laughs> Jesus. You're laughing, but it's, I'm telling you, this oh, is no. real dialogue oh, here. I go, it's that sad. I go through really, the same thing on the flip you? side. Oh, yeah. There's all these scam accounts, and you know, they look like a supermodel, and then yeah, it's just like, great filters. Once again, literally crypto. And yeah, or, yeah, they, or they have a link to their OnlyFans, and it's like, yeah. oh, okay. Oh, it's just so crazy. Yeah. Catfish time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be, I'm going to do like an online day when you go, would you like to FaceTime? Would you like to FaceTime? And yeah. then they'd go, sure. And then it'd be like this. Hi, how's it going? You're so cute. I love your profile. You know, can you imagine if they freak out? Oh, yeah, you know? put it down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I'm sorry. You're breaking up. You know, you can't break up anymore. Can you Can you imagine? <laughs> yeah, you know. That'd be so funny. If you like look the at them and they're like. The old cell phone. Yeah. And I've done the matchmaker thing and they like set me up with some guy who was happened to be a magician at trade shows. And I'm like, oh, perfect. How do you, well, how do you figure that we're a perfect match here? That's weird. Mm. He was very sweet, but he was a magician at trade shows. Oh. And I could see like strange things going on in the background of his house. I was like, what is going <laughs> well, on? I here? think, unless you're like David Copperfield or, so, you know. <laughs> he was not that. He was not that. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. You see these three ping pong balls? Yeah. Now there's two. <laughs> oh. Well, look at you. Aren't you something? Look at this. Whoa, what's that behind your ear? Yeah. Where'd this mouse come from? 
You know, oh God, I could just see it. <laughs> I was kind of like, not really. That's not for me. The perils of Pauline, not the perils of EG. <laughs> oh. And the dude, the match made like it was like he does have. Um, his teeth are a little bit funny. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, it shouldn't be growing out of his forehead. That's a dead giveaway. Like double rows, like shark teeth. I'm like, this, this is weird. Yeah, yeah maybe Get your not. Teeth I think that that would be a, a segment. There's a show for you. The perils of EG. <laughs> EG on the interwebs. Oh my god, going so through, funny. hacking through the weeds. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do a podcast called My Bad Dates. Yeah. Oh, yes. Thought it would be funny. Yeah. That'd be a good one. Yeah, no. Uh, not not for you at the time. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, that's funny. really, you know. It's funny. Yeah. Funny stuff. And in between, there's some cool people. Yeah. I'm trying. Yeah. Once in a blue moon. But anyway, so that's what life is, right? What? Life, relationships, family, voiceover. Mm-hmm. Here we are, Jim. Well, fecal matter occurs. There you go. <laughs> Shit happens. <laughs> right? Right? <laughs> yeah. Thanks so much for You're doing welcome. this, hon. Thank you very, very much. My pleasure. I love you. Thank you for my birthday gift. That was so sweet. Oh, yeah. That's right. It was her birthday the other day. Yeah. And I'm not going to tell you yeah. what day or what. Yeah. So there. Oh, you could say <laughs> I was, yeah. 9-11. It's easy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Never forget. Yeah. 9-11. Anyway, thanks, you guys, for having me. Yeah. Thank you that so much fun. for joining thank us. You. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you.